Now, personal finance rules of thumb, they can be great for creating rough financial goals. They can be great for sanity checking a financial plan, but can they be used for retirement planning? In this video, we're gonna look at three retirement rules of thumb, and we're gonna rank them from one to five, depending on how useful they are for creating a retirement plan. Now, the first rule of thumb that we're gonna look at is the income replacement percent. Now, the income replacement percent typically suggests that you need about 70% of your pre-retirement income in retirement to have a fairly comfortable retirement lifestyle. Now, the one thing I do like about the income replacement percent is that it does at least suggest that you need less in retirement than you did before you retired. So at least there's that positive there. But as a general rule of thumb, I would give it a two out of five thumbs. It's probably not the best rule to go by. And the reason is that it's fairly subjective. Everybody's different. Every retirement plan is different. And really this income replacement per spend could range anywhere from 50% all the way up to 90%. So let me give you two examples. Let's have a situation, for example, where you have a family, they have a, a few children who are maybe approaching post-secondary or entering the workforce. They maybe have a mortgage that's almost done being paid off, and maybe they're saving for their own retirement. So they might be saving you know, 15, 20, 25% of their income for retirement. Now, when they enter retirement, a lot of these things are going to go away. So hopefully the mortgage is paid off, the children are independent, and there's no more child expenses, and they don't have to save for retirement anymore. In this type of situation, it's not uncommon to see that they only need 50% of their pre-retirement income in retirement itself. Now, as another example, you could have somebody that is perhaps renting and they uh, need to continue renting in retirement. Those rental costs will go up with inflation and maybe they're on a defined benefit pension plan. So they're not actually saving a lot for their own retirement. They might be setting aside five, seven, eight, ten percent in maybe a TFSA every year, but that's about it. Now, in this situation, a lot of those expenses are going to continue into retirement. So this person might need 90% plus of their pre-retirement income in retirement. So as a retirement rule of thumb, the income replacement percent, the 70% of pre-retirement income needed in retirement is not a great rule of thumb to use for retirement planning. Now, the second rule of thumb that we're going to look at is the asset allocation rule, which suggests that your equity allocation should be 120 minus your age. So, for example, if you are age 65, this rule would suggest that your equity allocation should be 120 minus 65, which means that 55% of your portfolio should be in equities and 45% would be in fixed income or GICs. Now, this rule isn't great for a number of reasons. One is that it, um, it doesn't really take into account your personal risk tolerance, your risk capacity. Everybody's personal risk tolerance and capacity is different. And it, this rule doesn't take that into account at all. So I'm going to give this rule a one thumb out of five. It's pretty bad in terms of retirement planning, and I wouldn't suggest using this rule for retirement. It doesn't take into account longevity, and it actually increases the risk of running out of money in the future, especially if you were to have a period of high inflation rates or if you expect a long and healthy retirement. Now, the third rule of thumb that we're going to look at is the 4% rule. Now, the 4% rule suggests that you can, when you enter retirement, start drawing 4% of your initial portfolio and then adjust that amount for inflation every year and have a fairly good chance of not running out of money after 30 years. As a retirement rule of thumb, it's not bad. I'm going to give it four thumbs out of five. It's a pretty good rule. There are some cons with the 4% rule. But the big pro here, the big benefit of the 4% rule is that unlike some of the other retirement rules of thumb, the 4% rule is actually backed by quite a bit of academic research. So as far as retirement rules of thumb go, I would say the 4% rule is probably one of the better ones, if not the best. Now, there are some downsides to the 4% rule. One, of course, is that it doesn't really take into account investment fees. So if you have investment fees of 1% or even more, then the 4% rule is probably more like a 3% rule or less. The other, of course, is that it was based on U.S. investment returns. So if you have a globally diversified portfolio, it could be that the 4% rule isn't quite as accurate. Now, the last one, of course, is that the 4% rule really looked at a 30-year retirement period. So if you're retiring at age 55 or age 60, 
hopefully you have a fairly long retirement period that's 30, 40, maybe even uh, 40 plus years long. So in that situation, the 4% rule is probably not the best rule of thumb, but as retirement rules of thumb go, I would say it's probably the best one that there is. Now, retirement rules of thumb are great, but they're not a replacement for a detailed retirement plan. So if you want to create a rough goal for retirement, you know, roughly how much money you need, how much money you might be able to spend, rules of thumb are a great start, but they're no replacement for a detailed retirement plan. Accumulation, decumulation, tax planning, income splitting for couples, not to mention CPP and old age security benefits and when they start. These are just a couple of the considerations that we would want to take into account in a detailed retirement plan. If you enjoy this video, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe uh, and hit the little bell notification icon. We're coming out with a new video every week. Thanks for watching.